But the question comes up, why here, why now? Why does He say that? Now we learned, didn't we, back in our last message, chapter 7, verse 37, when He said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to Me and drink, and then spoke about the rivers of living water that would flow from the innermost being of those who came to Him. We know why He said that there, because He was capturing that moment of the pouring out of the water and He turned it to Himself. Well, He does the same thing here. And so in order to grasp this amazing moment, it's really important to understand another ritual at the Feast of Tabernacles, another very important ritual. He could have said, I am the light just out of nowhere, and, uh, and of course it would have made sense in the, in, the, in the world of darkness. We all understand that. All of us are characterized in Ephesians 5.11 as doing the unfruitful works of darkness. Uh, we walk in darkness. The way of the wicked is darkness, the Scripture says. The foolish heart is darkened. We are darkened in our understanding and excluded from the life of God. Scripture talks about that frequently. It's a common description. We have been delivered out of the domain of darkness. So there was certainly theological understanding of the notion of darkness. Even Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament said the fool walks in darkness. Isaiah said men substitute darkness for light. So I suppose Jesus could have just popped up and said, I am the light of the world, and it, and it would have had some impact because people used the metaphor of darkness for the disastrous reality of the human condition even then. But there's far more going on here than that, far more. And let me help you with that. When the Feast of Tabernacles began, candelabras were set up all through the court of the women. Candelabras really all around the court of the women, as far as historians say, they, they literally filled the court of the women with the capability of light. Every night they would go around and they would light these large candles and they would burn all night. This was actually called by the Jews the illumination of the temple. And the reason they did it was because, remember now, the Feast of Tabernacles, they're celebrating what? They're celebrating the forty years they wandered in the wilderness. And how did they know where to go in the wilderness? They were led by light. They were led by a, a pillar of fire at night and a lighted cloud in the daytime. This was the light that led them in the wilderness. To commemorate that, they had this illumination of the temple, and they lit all these candles and let them burn all night. There's some interesting descriptions of it by historians, ancient historians, who describe it as a stunning vision, like a, like a diamond in the midst of the city of Jerusalem was the temple ground with like floodlights coming up across its perimeter walls. Every night they were lit. The temple became a flashing diamond, a symbol of the pillar of fiery light and cloud that led them in the wilderness. Some have said they actually quoted Isaiah 42.6 and 49.6, I will be a light to the nations. I can visualize Jesus standing there. Maybe they're just lighting them. We don't have the exact moment. Maybe they're just lighting them. Or maybe He's there earlier in the day and they've been extinguished. And maybe He looks at those extinguished candelabras and says, I'm the light of the world and I never go out. If you follow Me, the light will never go out. You will never walk in the darkness, but you will have the light of life. It's a profound moment. It's a profound moment. I'm the light that never is extinguished. And as the pillar of light in the day and the night led Israel to the promised land, I am the light that will lead you to the kingdom. I will lead you to God, to heaven, 
to everlasting life.